Hello, dear friends. Here we are, 21 days of spiritual awakening. And you're here with us at Kardec Radio so we can talk to you about the beauty of life continuum, right? It's from the book Voltaire, it titled in English, I Am Back, by the spirit author brother Jacob, through the medium Francisco Cândido Xavier, the renowned Chico Xavier, Chico Xavier, that's how we say in Portuguese, Chico Xavier, and as a Brazilian, I feel like keeping the pronunciation, <laughs> Chico Xavier. So thank you so much, Carol and Mark, for double-checking the system. And here we are also in the app at Cardiac Radio, making sure that we're here with you in all possible and different ways, okay? So today we're studying a new chapter, which is chapter 9. This chapter is titled Clarifications. The clarifications can be life-changing and it's worthwhile. As it, Kardec says in the book, Medium's book, if the spirits bring us messages and we do not listen to what they are saying, they will not keep investing and in giving messages. Some people say, well, yes, I want a spiritual message. I say, you know, all these books are filled with spiritist messages for us. So we have enough to really guide our lives. When Brother Jacob wrote this book, he wanted to tell all of us the experience and what happens in the afterlife. What a charitable soul. To think of us, he could have thought of many other things, but he wanted to share with us the experiences so you and I can live a better life making healthy choices. But you know, sometimes, as Jesus said to Nicodemus, it's not enough to know. We need to feel them. Unfortunately, many people know and when it comes to time of doing it, we don't. Because we have an excuse. Oh, it's my work. Oh, it's my family. Well, but this is exactly what the spirits are saying. There is no excuse. Either you think of the general good or you don't. There is no neutral position. We need to practice creating a new brain. As a neuroscientist, we would like to begin today with the permission of Mentor Joseph, who guides our studies, to begin by mentioning that our physical brain is an imprint of our conquests of many lives. And if we want to change our brain so we see life differently, feel life differently, we need to make effort. It's not a given. We're not going to be transformed through osmosis. Being near elevated spirits is not enough. Look at Judas. Living together, side by side with Jesus. Being next to the pure spirit does not make us pure. And this is very important for us to keep in mind. Because there is a myth, there is a childish feeling inside of us that we feel like by being close to people who are more elevated than us, that makes us automatically more elevated. And it's not true. Because on earth, we're not together by affinity. We're together because it's a school. There are teachers, there are students. There are patients, and often we change our heads. Sometimes we're the patient, sometimes we're the doctor, sometimes we're the student, sometimes we're the teacher. But there are people who are always the patient, always the student, or always the rebellious person who doesn't want even to study. 
So tonight we are boosting new connections in our spiritual brain to be manifested in the physical brain. We're only gonna change, we're only gonna change if we make an effort. But let's make a note. The more I know, the more it will be demanded. The more I know, the more it will be demanded. Oh, but Vanessa, I've just become a spiritist. You know, it's not about how much, like in the sense of quantity. It's actually the opportunity for all of us to really walk the talk with the much that we already know. Right? So we're saying this because the spirit, Brother Jacob, is going to talk to us about clarifications. And this is the first clarification. When you and I are here together, we're creating new patterns of thought, new patterns of feeling according to these teachings. And this is creating new connections in our spiritual brain that will manifest in our physical brain so we can one day, hopefully sooner than later, manifest it in our lives. Some people ask me, Vanessa, why is it that I want so much to do something and I don't get to do it? It happens to me too. It happens to all of us. Why? Because of old conditionings. But you may ask, but what is the mechanism? The mechanism is like this. When Paul of Tarsus told us, I want to be the new man, but the old man is always winning over. What did he mean? Physically, perispiritually, we have a perispiritual brain that was constructed through many lives, connections. It's imprinting itself in the physical brain. So the old conditionings are registered there. The pathways are registered there. If I want to manifest any different behavior, I need to create first the pathway in my mind to imprint in new cells and connections, what we call synapses, in the perispirit. And then the stronger it is, this pathway is going to be formed in the physical brain because we are connected to the perispiritual brain molecule by molecule. So if there is a new molecule, quote unquote, created by my mind in my perispiritual brain, it's going to, depending on the intensity of this condensation, as says our dear Kardec in the book Genesis, it's going to imprint itself in the physical brain. And once we have the pathway there and the connections, the behaviors manifest. But oftentimes we know, so it's already here, but the synapses in the physical brain for the pathways of the new conditionings are not formed. They're being formed. That's why you and I can never give up. We can never give up. So if you are trying something new, good and healthy new, keep working on it, investing, making efforts. Be positively obsessed with the good, seeking the good, because then you're going to create the connections that will be gateways for the expression in our thoughts, feelings, words and actions. Make sense? That's what we're talking about. So let me say hi to the community and already answer to some questions, okay? Hello, beautiful Leia. How are you? Leia, did you know, and friends here, Brian Foster was surprised us today with his wife. He was visiting us from Washington State to ourselves here. He gave a beautiful talk at the Spiritist side of Virginia. So if you haven't had a, an opportunity, go to the Spiritist side of Virginia's Facebook page. It is there. A beautiful talk. He bridged up Spiritism with um, um, 
Owen's uh, writings about the spiritual spheres, the higher spheres. So it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And he was mentioning about how amazed he is, okay? How amazed he is that we are here, that we are in this realm, um, that we are doing all this work together and the, 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 the radio program. So Leia, good job. Good job, Danny. Good job, friends. Right? I'm just double checking here. I think Facebook is live, Jailton. Adilson, if you're there, please go there and help Jailton. Because he's sending me a message saying that the Facebook is not live yet. But I don't know what he means. But we're here, Jailton. Okay? Hello, Paula. We just saw each other. Welcome, welcome to the community of the 11th hour of the day. Here we have Valeria Benfica. Hello, Valeria. And Andrea Torres. Sunshine, how are you? Felipe, how are you? Andrea Torres, beautiful flowers. Americans in the music, love it, love it, love it. Nina, how are you, Nina? Adriana Monteiro, welcome. Katia, how are you? Michelle, you made it. Beautiful, Michelle. Welcome, welcome. Sol, how are you? Our beautiful Karina is here. And our dear Leo Vieira. Ooh, Leo is here. Thank you, Leo. Welcome, welcome. Ana Augusta, how are you? And Leonor Pacheco. Beautiful to see you here. So you see, Teresa Castro is here recalling that yesterday we're talking about our connection with the guardian angel, asking ourselves to polish this connection and singing, guardian angel, guardian angel, here I am, here I am, calling for your help, calling for your love, I am ready and willing, beautiful, Luciana and Tuani, thank you, Teresa. Welcome, my friend. So, sunshine is asking. I did not know that we are not together by affinity on the earth. Would you mind explaining that a little more? When I meet people I feel drawn to, but some but not others, isn't that affinity or family, spouses, etc.? I will answer to that in a minute. Thank you for asking. I will clarify. clarify. After all, tonight it's all about clarifications, right? Lisa Telles, hello, Rihanna, beautiful Rihanna, yay, by the way, Rihanna is here, and we're reminding everybody, the campaign for the Spiritist Groups, the Spiritist Group in South Africa is ongoing until July 4th, go to kardecreator.com if you can, see the post about this, and there is a banner, actually, you can either ship the books to us, so we'll ship to them in one package or you can uh, make a donation and a hundred percent of their donation is going to be converted into spiritist books that will be shipped to them after July 4th, okay? Thank you, Rihanna, Celia, Lancaster, welcome. And you watch Brian Foster's, right? It's unbelievable. We have beautiful people here with us. Brian Foster is this beautiful soul who has been doing so much work in spiritism, writing books, etc. And funny enough, I have spiritist friends who don't do the works in English, but they are like, where are the Americans? I say, you know, there are many Americans doing fantastic works in spiritism, but you need to have eyes to see because they are here. We just need to have eyes to see, right? Yes, thank you. Ah, oh, thank you, friends, for confirming. Jailton is here. Thank you, Jailton. Jussara is here. Welcome, Jussara. And here we have Rudy. Here with elevated work of thoughts. Work and serve is our deal, says Leia Severo. Thank you, Leia. 
You're ready, friends. Clarifications. Clarifications. Remember Brother Jacob discarnated? He, the whole process of discarnation was described. And then Dr. Bezerra de Menezes led a group of discarnate spirits with a team that transposed the bridge and they got to a colony. He got to the home of a friend who is hosting him and he was asked to sleep. He's going to begin this new chapter talking about something quite interesting. He says, let me read from his first words in this chapter. Waking up from strange torpor in which I had sunk. I could not tell how long I had rested for. I would not classify as common sleep the different state in which I had remained immobilized. It was an unknown rest. My spiritual body lay prostrated in the cozy bed, but I found myself in a revealing and surprising atmosphere. The images did not wander vaguely, as it happens in ordinary sleep, in which the person, after the dream, is unable to query the memory registers. Here, the pictures that had happened clear and firm lingered amply marked in my memory. So what did he dream about? I saw myself as a child in the land where I was born and recapitulated the pilgrimage from the old world to America with a wealth of peculiarities that astonished me as if they were events of the previous day. Can you imagine you, dear friends, you discarnate in your first sleep, you recall your trip to the US? <laughs> yes, I don't want to remember. You do want to remember, but you will. Yes, and they will stay with us. Why, you may be asking, right? I replayed in that wonderful and inexplicable tour of the mind, precious affections, and embraced my parents, traveling through unknown places. What happens to us in our childhood stays with us even after life. So, as a scientist, I would say, all these papers say, the long-term effects of our experiences in the early years of life as a spirit we would say it will stay with us forever that's why we parents are constantly reminded by mentor joseph let's refine our awareness regarding regarding the what we need our mission as parents. Forgive me, but I'm just fixing here cardiac radio for some reason. It went off. Thank you, Karen Mark. So, the beauty of it all, he says, when I woke up, I found Brother Andrade next to me. That's a little creepy. <laughs> Brother Andrade, you're here? I believe he would be have applied fluidic resources so that my energies could be reinvigorated. I was not fully restored. However, what a cheerful feeling of lightness I was now experiencing. I felt refreshed, optimistic, and content. So now, pause for a second. There are so many things for us here to clarify. First, would like to go back to the question that uh, our dear friend Sunshine made here. First and foremost, in the spiritual realm will be where minds that are like ours will be. It's by affinity. In the physical, 
we're not grouped by affinity. There are people who are ties of affinity, but we're not grouped by affinity. Okay? So, for example, you see the case of um, Brother Jacob. The group that discarnated and would travel to the spiritual colony, they were already at a level of awareness. Those who were inferior, they stayed. They are there in the lower zones. So in the spiritual realm, the law of affinity is more explicit. In here, it's very heterogeneous. We may have in a family spirits who are totally strangers. Look at the message, the end of the message, in the Gospel according to Spiritism, chapter 14, item 9. Dear, our dear, it's like this. He says, children in our lives. It's about parents and children. St. Augustine says, let me read to you a little bit, the end of the chapter. He says, Spirits whose similarities in tastes, identification, in moral progress and affection are led. Okay, hold on, friends. Kardec Radio, the app. Right? Yes, we are here at Kardec Radio. Right? Hold on. Okay, we're here, hopefully, working on it. All right. It is what it is. Okay, so friends, here we have, during their earthly migrations, the same spirits seek one another. And if during their pilgrimages they are temporarily separated, they will find one another later happy for their latest progress but since they must not work only for themselves god allows less advanced spirits to incarnate among them in order to receive counsel and good examples in the interest of their own advancement these spirits sometimes cause trouble but that is what comprises the trial that is where the task lies therefore welcome them as brothers and sisters come to their aid and later in the spirit world this family will be happy for having saved castaways who in turn will be able to save others so you see it's a collaboration aspect here we have julija welcome julija welcome welcome rita de cassia and friends it's very important for us to keep that in mind that we reincarnate amongst people who have different different tastes they are not alike some are many are are not okay thank you thank you sunshine for asking so we could clarify for everybody now the type of sleep that happens in the discarnate realm is also mentioned by andrea Louise in his book Yes, it's about the mind. It's not the body. It's the mind. But you see, the mind's never inactive. Even in the spiritual realm, we're never inactive. Never, ever. Also, another thing for us is very interesting. When he says that during sleep, he thought, he concluded that Brother Andraji probably applied passes on him, so he was reinvigorated. That is something that he's saying happened in the spiritual realm. Now I'm going to share with you. In chapter 2 of the book Evolution into Worlds, there is a beautiful message, a beautiful message, telling us about, precisely about what we're saying here. Okay? The spirits of applying on passes on you and I who are incarnated. Andre Louis says that discarnate spirits 
who are spirit doctors, nurses, therapists, they can use that time that we, the physical body is sleeping to promote spiritual surgeries. But it will depend on our merit and our cooperation. So if you and I want in any way to receive that treatment, we need to, let's say, pray for it first. Second, we need to, besides praying, merit it. So we really need to work for the good. Thank you, Adilso, for joining us, okay? Now he says he felt refreshed. Martha, his daughter, she came by, assisting him, and he felt like some form of need for food. Though he didn't say like he was like hungry, but need for food, so his daughter bought something that was like a juice of plants. And he sipped it with some difficulty, but he lacked the energy, so he needed it. And then out of drinking it, he recovered. This is interesting when he says with difficulty and the feelings of hunger. Also in the book Evolution into Worlds, we learn that of all the chakras, the vital centers, two of them are the ones that are deeply transformed by this carnation, stomach and reproduction. So if we have any issues there, we better resolve habits that are related to eating, drinking, and sex. Because when we discarnate, if the chakras are not balanced, if they are not more ethereally working the matter that they are processing, it's going to be very hard to discarnate. Very hard. Because these are two chakras that will essentially change when we discarnate. Says Andre Lewis, chapter 2, in the book Evolution into Worlds. He says, I found courage to make inquiries. I was not unaware that in raising myself to contemplate the beautiful day gleaming outside, another life awaited me, intense and different. Can you visualize it? You know when Emmanuel says, seek the good. Oh, the good is so good. That good exists, my friends. When you think, Vanessa, it's hard. No, no, no. Don't reinvent the will. Seeking the good, visualizing the good, and feeling the good is simply connecting with higher spheres. Because it already exists. The good already exists. It's not your creation. It's not your invention. It's God's creation. God is the good. He created the good. All we need to do is atonement. So when Emmanuel says, seek the good, he's saying, attune with what already exists. How exciting is it? Yes. In the description of Brother Jacob about the spiritual colony, of Andre Lewis, Valley Owen, and many others, Andrew Jackson Davis, is an opportunity for us to really visualize what already exists and we just need to materialize on the earth. And you can be a bridge. So if you ask yourself, if you say to me or to anybody, I want to help in this world begins with you peace in the world begins with me if I have love I know I'm truly happy if I am kind if we are kind to one another we know true love is deeply in our hearts the time has come for building peace on earth we don't believe in the lack of love peace for peace remember that music we sung together right so literally 
It begins in our minds. Visualize the spiritual colonies. One day, Mentor Joseph said, Vanessa, if one day you're sad, and it's daytime, look up, see the sun. And as Kardec discloses in a footnote of the Spirit book, the rays of light that come from the sun are the byproduct of the beautiful, pure, loving thoughts of the pure spirits that exist and meet in the sun. And he says, Mentor Joseph, if it's night time, you can either contemplate the stars or the moon and feel and visualize with your mind galaxies and he says if you don't see any star go to your computer your cell phone your tablet and see the cosmos the pictures by nasa and think that in all those galaxies all those solar systems zillions of them there are pure spirits caring for others. Zillions of them. Attune with the joy of knowing this. And attune and start visualizing how the happy worlds already cherish the good. And by doing so, we will keep investing on the good. Right? Right, André. Welcome, my friend. Jailton. What obesity, would obesity be a problem for the stomach chakra? For sure. Mm -hmm. It is a problem. So we really need to take care of it. A lot of what people don't know, obesity is, a, is already considered a disease by medicine. And... It's also something that affects the mind, the mental health. People's self-esteem are usually challenged. Mental health ra rates are, they, they decrease. So we really need to take care of it, okay? It doesn't mean that if you are super slim, that you're healthier and that you don't have problems. It means that obesity is something for us to address. Thank you, Jayuto, for asking. Thank you, Leonor. Got it? Next for the next... Are you ready for the next clarification? Me too. He says, I told Brother Andrade that I rested. That as I rest, I did not feel asleep as I did in the body of flesh. I remained under a curious psychological state where I had traveled far contemplating people and landscapes I did not suppose to be a proper sleeper he listened to me attentively explaining to me that the rest for the discarnate spirits varies greatly now this is something important for us the spirit too closely connected with human interests blames the need for widespread immersion in almost total unconsciousness after death. The more materialistic people are, the more attached they are, the more they will sleep and be unconscious, almost like in a spiritual coma, not only physical, spiritual coma in the afterlife. The absence of noble goals, the impulses of individuality, establish deep incomprehension in the soul, freed from the physiological webs, which before the greatest, the grandeur of the higher spirituality, bears resemblance to the savage coming from the forest before an assembly of intelligences devoted to artistic achievement. Almost nothing understands what he sees and what he hears. Criminals and addicts of all kinds 
with the spirit incarnated in the fences of their own living works find no pleasure in high spiritual inquiries demanding immersion in the heavy and gravitating fluids of the expiratory struggle in which systematically pain works in the soul now you see addictions crimes materialism just pushes us to be so dense that when we discarnate we're barely aware that we have discarnated okay now those the that the same is not true of the average spirit who possesses a regular philosophical religious culture and without any dark commitments to material experience the greater the effort of the souls of this kind to attain divine designs in the physical sphere the greater the lucidity of which they were endowed in the spheres beyond the grave so for you and i it is vital to practice today as we're saying attending to the divine designs scale zero to ten yay zero to ten and i say wait waking up rise and shine zero to ten zero being like i'm not good at all at doing god's will ten being like i constantly think about fulfilling god's will many people they make mistakes because they're con they are addicted to it. Can I share something with you since Mr. Joseph allowed us and asked us to talk about neuroscience? There is a neuroscience of the corrupted brain. When you see politicians who are corrupt, their brain is different. People who are addicted to power, they stimulate so much areas of the brain of addiction it's a different type of addiction the brain of a corrupt person is very similar in many ways to the brain of an addicted person addiction to power to positions and they and then their perception changes because they feel rewarded by that external position temporary position they feel so addicted that they justify it and they don't think they're doing anything wrong they even think they're doing something to benefit others mistakenly but that reward inside of them is coming back so there is a pleasure in it there is a reward a feedback loop it's like addiction I, it's like addiction no it is addiction it's old conditioning and then you may ask how can we change it creating new habits so for those who are addicted to power those who are addicted to money the best choices would be to leave something without it to learn how to create a new pathway a new pathway old conditionings so you and I probably my friends this is the one of the first reincarnations in which we are more lucid and we realize that we are here because God wants us to be here like Jesus said I'm here because my father sent me here I need to ask myself constantly God do you want me to do this now please tell me what you want right right Andre yes the spirits know so the greater the effort of the souls to attend divine designs in this physical sphere while incarnated the greater the lucidity of which they were endowed in the spheres beyond the grave 
So, if we want to be awake on the other side, we need to be awake here. That's why we are 21 days to spiritual awakening. Concluding the answer, Brother Andrade asserted that certain individualities, albeit exhausted at the supreme moment of the final transition, they free themselves from gross matter and set out on their way to divinize spheres with absolute lucidity and without any toning rest, which we understand in view of the level of spiritual sublimation they have already attained. Chico Chave. It's like Chico Chave. His body was tired. But you think he had any difficulty detaching? He was already detached. I was telling to somebody the other day, if you don't want to be, to face difficulties when you discarnate, make sure you already give your belongings to some people or to whomever before you actually discarnate. When Chico Xavier died, there was no major dispute. He assigned everything, like Divaldo Franco. Divaldo Franco, I know, he's already living as if he doesn't live here on earth anymore. He's here, but he's not here. He has already assigned everything to other people. Doesn't mean he's there sitting and waiting for death to come. But he's in the surplus. He already understood. We wish, as young as we still are, did you like that, my friend? <laughs> We're still young. Forever young, I want to be forever young. And we are forever young. But here on earth, here on earth, young and wise in the choices young and healthy in the choices right forever young i wanna be forever young and free we would add free of the attachments please no thank you you want my pink let me say my hello kitty pencil I can mail to you if you want this Hello Kitty pen, so I love it, but I can give to you as a practice of my detachment. <laughs> okay, friends, I know. Just laughing a little bit because we are here, marching towards the last parts of the chapter. And he was receiving explanations that are so important for us. He says, when I commented on the painful surprise that I had before the dark and disturbing landscape that we had passed through, Brother Andrade listened to me without protest. He said that the reflections of the human mind were really distressing. Remember when we saw the pictures about the spirits in the lower zones? And Brother Andrade saying, that is the creation of our minds. He continued to say that this information was not a reason for alarm, since if a man breathes surrounded by the radiations of his own thoughts, the world bears the mental emanations of the majority of its inhabitants. So it's like this, okay? You think and you're eating your thought, you're inhaling it. You emit a thought, you inhale. You emit you inhale and other people too I know it sounds a little strange but it's how it is it's impossible to throw mud without being muddy it's impossible to throw mud without being muddy it's impossible to pass perfume on to somebody without without keeping the perfume in our hands. See, I emit beautiful thoughts, I inhale beautiful thoughts. That's a good affirmation. Right now, I 
In, I exhale beautiful thoughts, I inhale beautiful thoughts. I exhale beautiful thoughts, I inhale beautiful thoughts. I exhale beautiful thoughts, I inhale beautiful thoughts. I breathe out beautiful thoughts and feelings. And I breathe in beautiful thoughts and feelings. Right? So, now he's going to say something quite interesting. He talks about numbers. Of course, this is at a time, 1948. There were 2 billion inhabitants in, on the earth. Now we have 7. And he says that more than a billion, so half of the population of the time, were semi-civilized spirits or barbarians. Okay. Imagine. So when you see the shooting in Washington D.C., near Washington D.C. today, who creates, who takes a gun and shoots somebody? Not a civilized spirit, a barbarian spirit. They are living amongst us. We hope we're no longer that barbaric. You want to ask about the scale? 0 to 10? 0 to 10. How barbaric are we? Hmm? 0 being like, not at all. I mean, very barbaric or 10, like, not at all. It is easy to evaluate, he says, the extent of the regenerative service beyond the grave. Consider that no one is transformed instantly. The shadow surrounding the dwelling of the incarnate mind become understandable. And the extensive support organizations in which numbers of selfless missionaries exercise love and renunciation, pity and tolerance among millions of low order spirits waiting for the benefits of the law of reincarnation or in learning of rudimentary virtues. We're not transformed instantly because, remember, old conditioning, the brain. We need to change the thoughts to manifest in the perispiritual brain, to imprint in the physical brain so we can manifest behaviorally. That's why. So you want to teach your child? Repeat, 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 repeat. Like I'm repeating to you. Repeat, repeat, repeat. I cannot do it. Let's try again. I cannot do it. Let's try again. I cannot. That's the rule. Some parents are like this. My child is never going to be good. How, how many times have they tried? Two. I uh, brought them twice to try some form of art. They don't like it. Of course, depending on the age, we understand. But you know, it's not about that. Practice. Practice, practice, effort, repetition, effort, repetition. You can do it. Repeat it. You can do it. Repeat it. But yes, I cannot stop thinking negative thoughts. Right now, I have negative thoughts. Okay. Keep seeking the good. Think of the beautiful spirits that exist. Think of the wonderful guardian angels that you have. Remember, they're watching you. They want to help you. You're already seeking the good. Right there. Okay? Now he says, the work of those missionary entities. At a glance, I understood the enormity of the redeeming services that operates distant of physical matter, and I experienced a great relief. Yes, there was work, work, work. There was work, work, work. And what is work for us? Being useful. You and I are co-creators at minor level, as Andrea Louis says in the book Evolution into Worlds. We're still learning to be co-creators of our own physical machinery. But there will be a day we'll be co-creators at major levels. 
and major levels. This co-creation at major level means creating planets, creating galaxies, of course, with other minds. Don't be overwhelmed. You are not alone and you know it. As Joana de Angelis says in her book, Child of God. Here we have our friend, Rosalind Rosa. You are a blessing, my friend. It was great talking to you today. Now, look at this. How comforting, he said. It was such perspective. I knew that I had wasted time on earth. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I'm sorry, friends. I'm thinking out loud. He's saying that meditating, he realized that he wasted time on the earth. But some place in this new life would reserve to me saving service. Brother Jacob, who did fantastic works, he wasted time on earth in 24 hours can we assign you a, an exercise you and I together in the next 24 hours you're gonna do a log try the best you can you can use a cell phone log how you're using your hours let's break it down in 24 hours okay I'm not saying minute by minute because that would be crazy but 24 hours like oh Vanessa from 1 a.m. to 6 p.m. I was sleeping okay fair then from 6 to 7 preparing myself breakfast blah 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 from 7 to the and then break down into actions because sometimes being at work is just like surfing the internet. Not necessarily we're being useful. And then sum it up and see how many hours you are actually useful. Okay, the homework for me too, okay? Useful in the spiritual sense. You're doing useful works, that means you're working, okay? Ana Kaja, welcome, my friend. It's good to have you here. It's wonderful that we met in Charlotte. What a beautiful event. Tiago, you are here. Thank you. I know you are doing beautiful work. And I'm happy to see everybody working to help others. Tiago, my head to you. Kudos. Let's move forward, friends. We need to multiply because one day our planet Earth is going to have zillions of spirit centers, but to achieve it, we need to form multipliers of this work. And Tiago, you are already there. Wonderful. Thank you, Nakarja. You too. Now, he requested Brother Andrade for some clarifications regarding the volatation. He asked why they needed to uh, use the bridge. Why couldn't they just volatate over the bridge? And he kindly said that that would be only possible if the group were composed only by entities trained in spiritual life fully develop, le, developed will. We need to work on our will. Now he's asking, Brother Andrade, why don't I recall my past lives? I'm here already. I don't have the physical body blocking me. And Brother Andrade listened to me calmly and informed that reincarnation, discarnation constitute vigorous and renewing shocks to the being that in some cases the immediate readjustment of memory was possible when the individual already reached a significant degree of elevation however most often reabsorption of reminiscences occurs very slowly and gradually avoiding destructive disturbances 
So it's very important to know we're going to discarnate, not necessarily we're going to recall who we were in previous lives. That's going to depend on our level of elevation. So we need to work here now if that's what we want. Are you in a rush to recall? Hopefully not, right? We don't. God bless the past existences. Thank you, God. We don't recall. Because by observing our current life we can already tell right so he's saying that some companions even use the passes to acquire more advanced memories but according to appropriate experience he had advised submission to the resources of nature so that we may return to the past with vague unalterable consequences okay so here we have friends what is the main lesson for us today fabiani welcome thank you my friend tiago friends what is the lesson for us many right first and foremost never quit anything keep working remember to manifest new behaviors we need to seek that good, feel the good, feel. You know, seek, it's a cognitive function. Feeling, it's a function of the heart. Visualize, it's like we're integrating both because it's going to require the visual. And that's when the prefrontal cortex comes back visualize and then we can mold it so we need to cognitively seek for the good feel it integrate visualizing to mold it there are as we speak that's the last sentence we're gonna say because it's pertaining to our homework the logging of our usefulness hour by hour in the next 24 hours. There are worlds, colonies, we're not even talking about worlds, spiritual colonies connected to the earth, in which several illuminated spirits constantly helping people, being kind and gentle, beautiful universities in the spiritual realm, clinics, right next to us all we need to do is to attune feel it visualize it and make it manifest here on earth molding molding is something that we do with our hands and believe it or not Leon Denis said our will is like hands it's like the driving force our thoughts, as Kardec say, are the hands molding. So once we know the shape of our thoughts, boom, we manifest it. You feeling excited, happy, and joyful? Let's make good choices. There's no neutral position. There's only constructive or destructive mental currents. We're choosing the constructive ones, right? Because after all, it begins with us. Peace in the world begins with me and you. When I choose love, I know I'm truly happy. If we are kind to one another, we know true love is and greatness is in our hearts. The time has come for building peace on earth. We don't believe in the lack of love peace for peace for everybody dreaming well wherever you are and if you are already awake because you're in australia or south africa you go on your way building peace on earth because it begins with you thank you friends and until tomorrow god willing 21 days to a spiritual awakening.